Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Victoria here at Radiant Moon Tarot. We have a reading for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus signs. This is for your new love. For all you singles out there, we are looking at May and June of 2024. And let's see what energies, thank you, are coming out here for you guys. Um, May, uh, just so you know, May and June in general are a lot more pleasant energies that we've had going on right we've had march and april we've come out of eclipse season we've come out of mercury retrograde in aries all of these things right so the energy that we are stepping into is a lot more abundant a lot more pleasurable and um a lot more stable okay um it's still with still with some ups and downs because of course that is life but not anywhere near anything like we've had. So it's the great energy opening up for number one. We've got um, April 29th. Uh, Venus went into the sign of Taurus and Venus rules Taurus. So this is a great energy for uh, creation, for new beginnings, for love, for relationships, romance. Okay, self-love here as well. That's some great energy coming in there. May 7th, we have a very abundant, a very promising new moon in the sign of Taurus. And of course, while that is happening, we do still have Venus in the sign of Taurus. So great energy to get out there to meet new people or to set those intentions to manifest love into your life. And we've got um, another really positive lunation for you on the 24th. Third, um, which is really going to carry us over and lead us into June, which is a full moon in the sign of Sagittarius, fun loving, freedom seeking, adventurous energy, really full of positivity and passion. Those are really great energy, but we also do have, um, some Venus, Jupiter, and Neptune energy. So your ruler is there into the mix and you could potentially have some dreams come true or you could find your way to make your dreams a reality. So this can be really great. And of course, with Venus and Jupiter in there, lucky in love, right? So open up the doors to some wonderful, wonderful things. Keep your eye on the calendar for May 18th. Very positive day. A lot of astrologers will consider this the most luckiest day of the year. Granted, it can be a little bit unpredictable. So even if something uh, unexpected and maybe a little challenging happens that day, trust that it's for your best and highest good and it can actually move you forward to something spectacular. But we have the sun conjunct Jupiter on that day uh, in the sign of Taurus. And we also have Venus conjunct conjunct Uranus and Uranus being that wild card to bring us freedom in some way, but we can also have a little bit of luck and love on that day as well. So mark that day on your calendar. You could have some very positive happenings. We have happy, happy coming in here for you guys first. So this is wonderful things blossoming in your life. This is your time to blossom and shine. And the happy, happy energy is happy new beginnings, happy friends, happy events, um, the things that make you feel good um, and focusing on your own happiness and well-being. And when you do that, uh, what happens is you project that out into the world and then you attract that back to you. So this can be wonderful in this particular deck. Whenever we saw it, we see an egg, which she's, she's sitting on, shows things manifesting in your life in the most wonderful, wonderful of ways, which is good because we're getting out of this energy. We've got orphaned coming in here for you guys. Okay. Now orphaned is card number five. So this does represent an obstacle or a challenge, something to work through, but it also represents an opportunity to change. All right. And in the orphaned energy, it's pretty much what it looks like. It's like five of pentacles energy, like five of cups energy, right? The fives, the challenging fives. And so in this, you know, you could be at this moment in time feeling a little bit left out, feeling like you are abandoned or orphaned, like everyone else is living their best life and passing you by. This can be where, you know, maybe you do get some no's as you go through on your path for love, right? Recognize that no's are the universe's ways of protecting you from something that hmm, wasn't for you, right? And we forget that sometimes because we do get lost in the moment. So the orphaned energy may be something that comes up and maybe something that you need to work through as you move forward, but recognize that you do have an opportunity and you do have the potential to turn things around. And we're turning this dark gray energy into this vibrant rainbow, pink, beautiful, starry, blessed energy. 
and we have new life here as well. Okay, the positive certainly outweighs any negative. The new life energy is like a breath of fresh air. It's like you coming to life is things blossoming in your world, recognizing the potential, the possibilities of things, and get ready because doesn't look like doesn't that look like a beautiful energy? wonderful energy there for you. So this is about turning things around, right? Dare to imagine that you can have a um, different life or um, make those connections that can enhance your life, right? Not your sole cause of happiness, because that starts from within, but some wonderful new beginnings, new happenings, and doors opening for you. You may even just feel like the sense of pressure has been taken off of you for, you know, for finding new love and you're embracing your singledom rather than railing at the fates about it. And you're like, you know what? At the moment, I think being single is kind of fun. I'm opening, I'm open to love and I'm not going to reject it um, when I have, when I find it or when it comes in. But in the meantime, I'm just going to live my best life and I'm going to have fun and I'm going to find the positives in being single. We have true gem coming in here. So it's a couple of different things. Number one, the universe is reminding you that you are a gift. You are a sparkling jewel. You are one of a kind and nobody can replace you. This is understanding your worth and your value. All right. And so this is a beautiful energy of a reminder of exactly what you are. Right. You are a gem. This is also saying that you might get some gifts coming in here for you guys as well. You could also be finding that person who sparkles up your life a little bit, right? They are that magnificent, magnificent sparkling gemstone. Um, there's a lot of facets about them, right? If you've ever looked at a cut gemstone, they have a lot of facets, which gives them the sparkle, which gives them the shine. And so there could be a lot of facets, number one, to your personality and but also to the person coming in. So it can be a little bit um, a little bit mystical, and magical, right? A lot of different things to unravel, but a very positive energy. This is showing that there's gifts from the universe coming in, things manifesting in for you. We have communication, expect communication to speed up. And, um, and this can certainly, uh, can certainly be a great, um, uh, a great thing going on. Um, because we do have, uh, a lot of lines of communication that are opening up for us, uh, starting in May as well. So, um, this can be, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of different chit chat, a lot of messages coming in. Um, you're opening the doors of communication. You're talking to somebody, chatting with someone. If you're already kind of making a connection now, um, expect communication to kind of like speed up a little bit. And um, but this is also a little bit of a reminder here. Yes, you know, communicate with people, talk to people, get out there, socialize, have fun. But this is also a reminder here to get off your phone. All right. This person is just staring at their phone and you know, it's easy, especially, you know, if you do make an initial connection, whether you're meeting people online or some other way, um, it's easy in this, how should we say, in this time period of our lives when we have a lot of technology and sometimes it's easier just to send a quick text message than it is to pick up the phone and call someone. It's a reminder to get off your phone and get outside and see someone face to face. Okay, because you can learn so much more about them in five minutes of talking to someone face to face than days and hours on end of texting back and forth. So just a reminder there to get off your phone and out into the real world, out into reality, right? We do forget that sometimes, but you get that organic connection, right? And we have wallflower. So the wallflower card is the same as the orphaned card. Okay. Feel like, does she look happy? No. Um, feeling left out, feeling like, you know, you're stuck in a corner. Nobody puts Pisces in a corner. Okay. So it's time to break out of this energy and remember to embrace your singlehood. Embrace the fact that you know, if you leave your coffee cup on the counter and you come home, it's still there. Um, embrace the fact that if you leave your wet towel on the floor in the morning without picking it up because you're in a rush to get to work, that no one's going to complain about it when you get home. You know, um, you know, celebrate the fact that if you are going to some sort of event or gathering, you're not necessarily responsible for anyone else, right? We've all had that significant other that drinks a little bit too much at a party and then you end up getting embarrassed or you have to look at them. 
or look after them, I should say, right? So sometimes we can turn a negative or a perceived negative into a positive is really what I'm getting at, right? Yes, maybe you do have to go to something stag, right? You Maybe you don't have a date for something and you do start to feel a little bit left out or like the the third wheel, right? That kind of thing. But what positive aspects can you make out of that? Right. And that's really what this card is saying to you is that don't get stuck in this energy of being a wilting wallflower because you're not. And you have the ability to break out of that pattern or cycle or break out of that energy. If that is you, happy thoughts, keep that positive vibe about you. Right. And you will awaken to some new energies there. And it is easy to get in that energy. And sometimes it's just like for a fleeting moment or sometimes it's for days or weeks or months, right? But we that's not where we want to live. We want to live in the in the happy vibes. We want to live in the positive vibes. We want to see the blessings in even the negatives, right? So, big reminder there for you guys. We have calling in your soulmate here and that's going to land right on that true gem card. All right, your prayers, affirmations and visualizations help bring you together. So calling in your soulmate, if you haven't already made an initial spark connection with somebody, then this is some intentions that you can perhaps set at that new moon in Taurus ruled by Venus on May 7th. This can be a really wonderful time for you guys to do that. But we've got soulmate energy there for you. We've got flirt Hey, get out there and flirt. Another benefit of being single, right? You can flirt with whoever you want, right? You can be sparkly. You can be um, social, right? And there's nothing wrong with a little bit of flirting, right? It doesn't necessarily go anywhere. But it's all about being lighthearted and being, you know, kind of, you know, instead of a wilting wallflower, you're going to be that beautiful rose that, you know, goes around the room and, um, you know, brings everyone joy. And, you know, you've got that smile on your face, right? But there could also be someone that you connect with and it starts with a little bit of flirting, right? Nothing wrong with that. Kind of feel each other out a little bit, you know, it's like, oh yeah, this feels kind of interesting. This feels good. So uh, it could be someone coming in here quite soon that uh, you do flirt with just a little bit, or maybe they flirt with you and you're like, oh, well, this is interesting. We have, it is safe for you to love. Yes, it is. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. Okay, Spirit's giving you this big green light to open your heart, to welcome love in your life, to manifest love into your life, to put love out there. And this is what you will get back. And it is safe for you to do so. We also have past life relationship coming in here for you guys. Now, past life relationship doesn't mean this lifetime, okay? So that's not an ex coming back, all right? This is a past life. So someone energetically, spiritually that you have known before, you've come in contact with each other before. So you could you could meet somebody and maybe you start out with a little bit of flirting, you know, that kind of thing. And then just something kind of clicks there and you're thinking, you know, I, this feels familiar, right? And, you know, we're not all meant to, um, we're not all meant to have successful romantic connections with our soulmates or with our twin flames or, you know, even things in necessarily in this lifetime, but in the next lifetime, right, is when we could meet again. And because we've learned some things from the past lifetime, right, this is the lifetime when something can really kind of click into place. So you could have like another chance at love, but this is love from a past life. So very interesting energy um, with that, right? But it just, it, there's a sense of familiarity in a sense of that we've known this person before. All right. So it can be really wonderful. We have the Ten of Cups coming in here. So we started out your reading with Happy Happy, and we have the Happy Happy Ten of Cups card coming out here for you guys as well. Happy home, happy family, happy relationships, happy you, a lot of love in the air, a lot of abundance in the air, some fun, some good times in the air for you guys. That Ten of Cups is beautiful energy. You can meet someone that makes you really happy. You could have, um, you could be, uh, your social life can be picking up here in this particular energy as well. And we've got all kinds of wonderful abundance. The blessings headed your way. We've got the justice card here for you guys. Okay, new beginnings on the horizon. This is some good karma headed your way. This is um, potentially for some of you with this energy, you could have some sort of legal situation wrapping up. So if there's been something um 
uh, you know, if you have like a past relationship or you've got children or anything like that, maybe you're getting some sort of legality squared away in regards to that, like custody battles or alimony or divorce papers, things like that. Those could be wrapping up for you with that justice card. Okay. But this can also represent that if you feel as though you've been treated unfairly in love and you have not, you know, gotten what you know you deserve, right? Then the justice card is here to right some wrongs. This is here to bring you in some karmic justice for yourself. It does bring you in some good karma. But this also brings an energy of finding balance in your life as well. And of course, if we're opening ourselves up to love, we do have to find a balance. If you've been focused on your career, now maybe is a time to, you know, kind of cut back your hours a little bit, make some time to go out and have fun and meet people, right? This can be where this is what you're looking for and this is what you're attracting in. Now it might be a Libra in person, okay, or someone who is just they're balanced, they're fair, they're, um, they like harmony in relationships, they're honest and truthful, right? Justice card brings in some honesties, brings in some truth, right? And, um, you know, they can be very decisive in their energy as well. But of course, this can be your energy also, right? You're finding balance in your life, you're being honest with yourself, you're communicating more with people out there, but you're connecting with the right kind of people with this energy, or um, you are really bringing bringing in the blessing of the energy of being able to make a decision, right? Do I say yes and continue communicating with this person if they spark my interest? Or do I have the power to say no, right? If this person does not pique my interest or if I'm seeing some red flags. So the justice card brings in some very decisive energy for you guys because you see the truth. You see the truth right there and you're like, nope, not going to waste my time on this. Or yes, let's explore this a little bit further. All right. So your decision making abilities are very much on point. But with the Ten of Cups and the Justice card, there is some very high vibe energy, very happy vibe energy, very positive energy that's going on. You could potentially have some friends that are going to help you in your quest for love, um, you know, uh, and that can be really wonderful for you, right? And um, maybe your natural instinct is to say no to that. Try something different. What happens if you say yes, right? If one of your friends wants to hook you up with somebody and set you up on a blind date, maybe what they'll do instead, <laughs> sneaky, sneaky, maybe what they'll do instead is have some sort of event. Ten of Cups energy, right? Maybe like a house party or something or a graduation party or, you know, just something they throw together for the workplace or whatever it happens to be. Um, you go along to this party and maybe they just coordinate something in the background of making sure that a certain person is also there. And then they make the initial introduction and then it's up to you from there as well. So that can be sometimes a lot easier to meet new people. So if you are that friend that, that you know, wants to set someone up with someone you know, right? And, um, you know, that can be a way to do it without either party knowing that's what you're doing and without any pressure on anyone. And that can be, you know, things can um, uh, develop a little bit differently when we've got that. But that could be going on there for you guys as well. So you can have friends that are helping you along your journey. But some wonderful energies that's coming in there. Let's continue with it. We've got the Page of Wands. Beautiful. The Seven of Swords. Not always so beautiful. And the Four of Wands. Beautiful. All right. So here we go. Um, with this energy, with this energy here, the Page of Wands, new. You got news, you got offers, you got invitations, you got new things happening, you're getting out, you're exploring the world. Um, the Page of Wands quite often does come in when things are manifesting in your life. So a lot of things going on, a lot of new beginnings, a lot of new people coming in there, opening those doors to love and putting yourself out there. So it's a wonderful, exciting vibe that's here with this Page of Wands. But we do have the Seven of Swords coming in here. So part of the blessing with this particular card is the blessing of staying positive, the blessing of looking forward, the blessing of letting negativity go, or the blessing of trusting yourself to make the right decisions. All right. And sometimes we don't trust ourselves to make the right decisions. Okay. And so this is one where you're reminded to trust what you are thinking and feeling and what you are intuiting. Okay. The seven of swords, yes, can sometimes be an element of mistrust. Okay. Betrayal, that kind of thing. 
but truth shall set you free with that justice card there. Okay, so you could be seeing the truth of some past situations. You could also, um, let's just face it, with the justice card here and the seven of swords and them being blessings, the energy benefiting you the most, your BS meter is very much in tune and on point. So you're going to recognize um, you're going to recognize mistruths when you see them, which is especially important if you are out in the dating world and especially if you are like um, doing online dating and things like that. Right. Your BS meter is like just triggered um, um, to a very fine tuned point. Right. So it's really good that that is there. But I feel like here that you are really learning to trust yourself in this energy Okay, maybe you've been hurt before, you've been betrayed before, that kind of thing. All right, but you're turning that energy around. These are blessings for you. All right. But yes, we have the Four of Wands. Now, the Four of Wands is a wonderful card. So this can represent events and celebrations and activities um, all around you, right? This can be anniversaries. This can be weddings, engagement parties. This can be workplace get-togethers, family get-togethers, whatever it is. A lot of people coming together to celebrate. A lot of abundance in the air. A lot of happiness and joy in the air. Um, and all very high vibe in this energy. So, you know, so this can be where you meet someone where some magic happens is when you are getting more social, you're getting outside, you're meeting people face to face, right, rather than on the phone. And um, this does bring you something to celebrate. Now, the four of wands also shows your commitment to your journey to finding love, but you're not obsessed about it. Seven of Swords, you're letting go of fears and doubts and you're stepping more into the flow with this energy. You're more open and you're trusting in the um you're trusting in the energies that are around you. You're trusting that love is out there for you. And the funny thing is when we stop obsessing or trying to control an outcome, that's quite often where the magic happens, right? Because we're more in the flow. But the Four of Wands is, of course, yes, known as your 1111 card. Um, the Justice card out of this particular deck is card number 11. So, um, you know, so you've got a lot of ones, a lot of starting energy, a lot of new energy, new life energy there for you, a lot of things manifesting for you. And the Four of Wands is known as your Make-A-Wish card, right? So where you set your intentions, you make a wish, you could potentially have some coming true as well. Okay. And um, it's very magical kind of energy filled with love and abundance and high vibe. And this is what you're embracing. This is what's coming in for you. So something to celebrate for you guys. We have the Fool card here as your challenge. Now, when I pull a card for your challenge position, it does not mean the same as reverse. Uh, it's just something that's a delay, something you need to work through, something that you need to figure out before you can move forward. And the Fool is new beginnings, a fresh start, a sense of adventure, meeting new people, getting out there, finding love, new relationships, new connections, new, 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 and all kinds of fun. But when we have the Fool card here, it requires a leap of faith. It requires is to, you know, not just put a toe in the water of uncertainty of our future path. It requires us jumping right in and taking a plunge. So this can be challenging. And yes, we do have the seven of swords coming in here, which can be doubt and mistrust. So with this fool card here, it's like, what is holding me back? Why don't I trust myself to make the right decisions? Do I trust the situation? Right. And so that might be something internally that you need to work out. All right. So taking that first step forward can open up a world of possibilities. So you could feel that I feel some of you here with justice card and the seven of swords. OK, you're sorting out a legal situation and you need to wait for that to um get resolved before you feel like you can move forward free and clear because the fool is freedom. Right. Um, the fool is ruled by Uranus energy, breaking free getting out to the future, right? Um, taking the next step forward, stepping into something new, right? And so you might feel that you need to resolve something before you can take that step, right? And uh, understandable, of course. 
um, that this can also just be something holding you back, some fears, worries, doubts. And I feel like this is a big breakthrough moment for you guys in the next couple of months. And you're going to be stepping forward, right? It's just that something may may take you a little longer than it might take some other people or there's something that you need to resolve or figure out before you can take that step. But the Fool does show that you are ready for new beginnings and you're ready for love, even if you might be a little bit hesitant. So something to work through for you. We've got the Queen of Cups and this is your advice from Spirit. Open your heart to love. Trust that there's love out there. Step into the flow. Keep an open heart. Keep an open mind. Allow love to flow to you, but also project the love out into the universe that you want to receive, right? The energy that we put out there is what comes back. We don't want wallflower energy. We don't want orphan energy. We want the happy, happy. We want the new life, right? We want to embody the Ten of Cups. We want to embody the Fool and it's all of its positive aspects, right? And we want to put this out into the universe, put this energy from our insides out, ripple that, ripple that outwardly and allow that to come back in. The Queen of Cups does also show that there might be something that you need to find peace with and something that does need to heal or resolve and then you're ready for love. So do whatever you need to do, make decisions that you need to make, cut ties or cords that you need to cut so that you can be ready to welcome love moving forward. But this Queen of Cups does show that there is love and peace and some wonderful happy vibes that are all around and spirits really wanting you to be open and receptive to it all. I'm going to leave all that there for you, Pisces. I hope there was something here for you. If so, please do hit that like button, that thumbs up. It's free for you. It lets me know you resonate with the reading. It lets YouTube know the same thing so that you interact with the video and then it shows it to more people. It's the uh, it's how the YouTube algorithm works, right? You interact with the channel you're watching and then um, YouTube algorithm sees that. So it shares it with more people. So I truly appreciate that. Um, it helps me out and I thank you for that. But if you enjoy my my content, hit that uh, notification bell. It will subscribe you to the channel and also let you know whenever I put up something new. I do daily readings, money readings, um, all those kind of things, timeless readings, pick a card. So, um, you know, stay tuned for some more. But in the meantime, I wish you all the best on your quest for love. Um, hopefully in the next couple of months are filled with some possibilities and some abundance for you. Um, so I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.